first. The, uh, the action you saw was important. It was not what we would teach. It's not our culture. Uh, it did occur. That is our videotape. We, uh, we don't back away from that. And I promise that we will take appropriate actions to, to look into this situation and to investigate it uh, through our internal affairs process. So with that being said, know that I have started an internal affairs process. I've also talked to Sim Gill to talk to him about some of the other implications on this case. So we will leave no stone unturned as far as what we're looking into. Um, and I want, I want those affected by this, and especially that little nine-year-old girl that had to see her mother uh, go through this situation. It was tragic. It was a terrible situation. And we should have been much better at uh, controlling the situation and taking care of it. One of the current concerns I have right now is <clears throat> if it's that bad today, why wasn't it that bad two years ago? On March 10th, when we responded to the scene, when our officers took this action, when this situation was reviewed by a sergeant, because every arrest that we make, when we take somebody to jail or take them into custody, we have a sergeant review that arrest. They review the probable cause. They talk to the victim or the person being arrested to see if there was any illness, injury, or some question as to what happened. I think our review process failed us that night. And with that, I'm taking appropriate measures to correct that. We have gigabytes, terabytes of videotape that we record every month. I'm looking into starting some sort of internal process where we can review that, some sort of quality control, some sort of check that we can review these things. And we'll, we'll start looking into that this week. But with that, I'll, I'll be glad to take any questions. When did this happen and what was she being arrested for? This incident occurred on March 10th, or I mean, I'm sorry, October 10th of 2014, almost uh, two years ago, coming up on two years. It was a call, it was a verbal dis disturbance. And so uh, the arrest, I think, was some sort of public in talks, disturbing the peace. And then when she spit upon the officer, they arrested her for assault on a police officer. Do so we know why the officer retired? What's that? Do we know why the officer retired? I think it was just normal retirement. He reached the course of his 20 years or whatever time that he wanted to spend here and he, he left for personal reasons. Chief, what do you see in the video there that really is disturbing to you? What disturbs me is you have a woman who is, is going through a very difficult time. I mean, people don't call us when they're having the best of days. We go at some of the worst times in people's life. Um, there was some sort of uh, altercation. Um, alcohol was probably an issue. Um, but this woman was in handcuffs and our officers took those strong of actions against her. That concerns me. Now, bear in mind, I need to conduct, a, 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 we will, we'll do a thorough investigation. And so I'm speaking maybe a little ahead of myself, but I've seen the video, you've seen the video. It doesn't look good, and I would expect different from our officers. Does the officer actually punch the woman? Do you see that? I see a strike. I can't tell if it's an open hand or close hand, but and we'll find out. What is the protocol when you're arresting someone, throwing them to the ground and kind of handcuffing them? What is the protocol? Well, our protocol is always to, to use whatever force is necessary. And that's the differently? Perhaps. I think so. Why did the video come out now? How did the woman or her daughter get the video? That, I think it was a tape that was left over. Not left over, but it came out of the criminal proceedings. Um, we didn't release the tape. And so when KSL broke that, we went back and saw the video. We confirmed with what we had on file that that was the tape, but we didn't release them. Was she charged then in this incident? Yes. Was she charged with? Um, I, what I mentioned there, I think it was a public in talks, assault on a police officer, maybe disturbing the peace, so we can get that for you. Have yep. you talked to her or the family? Yet? I haven't talked to her, no. The other officer, is he on leave or anything now that this has come out, or what's the no, procedure No, we there? will run, run it through our course of, uh, I mean, our internal process and so but I do have some questions um, I mean some of those questions are we had a supervisor on scene why why are we dealing with this now instead of October 11th of 2014 that concerns me did the woman call police or who called them? do you know I'm not sure who called I don't think it was the, the arrested person that night I think it was either family members or neighbors 
some kind of a bag or something to kind of yeah, keep that, it from, is that kind of what you carry then or what? That, that's called a spit guard. And yes, that, that is specifically designed for situations like that. It's just a loose cloth bag that goes over their head to prevent them from spitting people. So that, that wasn't a problem? Anyway. No, no, that, that's completely appropriate because, I mean, when somebody's spitting, um, there's, there's a chance that, through infection that they could get hepatitis or, I mean, that is, there is... The two officers, are you able to tell us any, are, are these two veteran officers, are you able to tell us anything about them? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to disclose that right now. Let, let it run its process, uh, but I do promise that I'll be as open and as transparent as I can as we, we move through this. And, uh, like I say, it's troubling. I wish we weren't sitting here today or standing here talking about this today. I wish we were talking about this two years ago. I, you know, I think it's important to know that this did happen two years ago, and I think under this new administration, under Mayor Biskupski, we've worked very hard as a police department to talk about issues and things that we could do better. I mean, we've, we've invested a lot of time in de-escalation training. We worked very hard on, uh, we put into to policy or into uh, practice, it's called 909. It's kind of a code that we use amongst each other because we're human too. There are things and situations that, that push our buttons or perhaps we're having a bad day. And when that happens, uh, it's incumbent on us to take care of our, fel our, our fellow police officers. And so. That would be a situation where you would step in and say, hey, look, I can see this is probably not your best situation. Let me see if I can do something. Let me take over, step back, and hopefully we don't get to that type of situation. So, yeah, we are our brother's keeper on the street. We really have to be. You mentioned the strike in the video. What do you make of the language that you use in the video? The language was absolutely horrible. There's no excuse for that language. In action and in word, I can't, I can't condone that. Now, did Chief. you feel it was too rough also the way he brought her down or what your feelings about while she was down on the ground? I think the totality of the circumstances could have been handled there. But with that being said, I want the investigation to play out. I think we need to hear from the officers if there might be some other situation. But again, I'm looking at the same tape you're looking at. Have you had a chance to talk to you, the officer still working for you yet about what happened? No. Quality control, sorry. Quality control process. Are you concerned? on of finding out more incidents like this that has been you know not handled properly you know what i'm this is alarming and i'm concerned that i'm really concerned that we didn't know about this earlier i think this is like i said i think this is the outlier but if we're going to have videotape and, and and that's that's what policing is going to we're all everybody's pushing for, for body camera it it our officers uh it affords us uh, privileges and it affords us protections because it's on video too, because it helps us too. So I think we should take every strategy to, to look at ways that it can improve, improve the way we police and our transparency. So yeah, I think, it, I think it's a good thing. What's the latest, how many officers in, in your department use body cams? About, 304, about 340 cameras are deployed on the streets. Out of how many total officers do you guys There's have? There's 452 there? sworn. So administration, you know, I don't have one, but... Uh, Would you say most officers that are patrolling have body cameras? Yeah. Now? Any officer that's dealing as a first responder or on the street has a camera. Do you know if there's another view from the other officer's camera of kind of what happened there? No. That, that, the other officer did not have tape. What was posted on the YouTube of the incident? Yeah, there's a longer. It's, it's, it's much longer. Anything in there noteworthy that... No. It's the worst of what... We've all seen is on that part that was posted. What kind of penalties could happen to an officer in this kind of situation if there is? Well, there's always, there's internal, uh, I mean, there, there's policy. Uh, if they violate policy, we can take, you know, policy uh, action within the police department. It could be a letter, it could be time off, it could be termination. But then there's also the criminal proceeding too, because that officer, based on what you saw, that could be looked at as an assault by a police officer. Is that what Sim Gill's office? Yeah, did? Sim would look at that and review that. And uh, I, I, I had a call into him last night before I went home, and I'm going to talk to him today. But the, what I, you know, the one thing, if, if, if you could help me with this, I want, I want the citizens of this city to know that this is a good police department, that the officers do great work, uh, day in and day out. I mean, hundreds of calls, thousands of calls, thousands of arrests. This, and I promise, we'll take care of it. And if if there's more situations that we need to disclose, we will. I mean, that's
that is one of the, the things that I commit to and Mayor Biskupski. I mean, we're going to be as open and transparent as we can in these situations. When are you going to start the process of quality uh, control reviewing all these uh, terabytes of data or media? Well, I need I, I, first. I, I, I'm going to meet with uh, some of my uh, administrative staff to talk about because there are, there is so much data. I mean, we're we're loading downloading about 440 gigs per week, and that would be an awesome task to have to review all that. So I think that there might be some sort of internal audit where we can randomly go through and check a couple of situations or uses of four situations per officer per month or something like that. I don't know. There's got to be some way we can review this. How long do you keep body camera video now as part of your protocol? This is two years back, but how, how, how do you guys have uh, it we, set up? Since we've had cameras, we haven't deleted anything. When did you guys first get cameras? Uh, that, that was right about two, or three, two and a half, three years ago. Have you discussed the possibility that at some point the data may be such that you do need to cut off it? At yeah, a yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're looking at those issues, but anything of note or value like this, we'll hang on to. And how did you say again that they came across Jane's video? Um, I think it came through the channel of the defense attorney, gave it to a family member, and then gave it to uh, the host of the home. Sorry, Chief, I don't know if you said this. Uh, did you say you talked to the family since? No, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to talk to them. And you don't know if the woman was spent some time in jail or what were the charges were or anything like that? Yeah, no, I, I don't know the exact charges. Like I thought, I, I think those were the, ch the charges that she was, she was taken to jail. Uh, I, I think at jail she was refused at jail. She wasn't. She wasn't put into jail. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, switching gears. Stitch uh, wanted me to touch on if there's anything new in the Rose Park shooting on Tuesday. No. Okay. Uh, and they also wanted me to touch on. Uh, <laughs> Let's get them all. Eighth North. Abdi Muhammad. That we're still uh, we're still in this, the, the waiting period. We're still waiting for Sim Gill's decision. So. Not yet, no. Are you going to? Um, I think in time we will. Okay, well thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Chief.